Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to the movement. Thank you for joining us tonight. We are the movement. We're a motivational organization geared to educate minds, empower, nurture, and transform. And as we so affectionately say every week, we are a movement to move. Hi, Lola. I just noticed who that was up there. We are a movement to move. We want to help you thrust into your purpose so that you can start living the best version of yourself and win. Right, Annette? That is so correct. And we're excited as usual. And I'm, I just want to get going. So let's move, Nita. Let's roll. Hey, it. hey, we just, she, hey, she ready tonight, y'all. She ready tonight. She's not just going to get moving. I just want to get moving. Wait a minute. We got to let Lashavia in. I'm trying not to open up my screen just yet because they've changed all of our stuff as to how we function here on Zoom. Now I have to admit each person as they come in. So I have to keep checking to make sure that I'm not leaving anybody out of the room. So it looks like we got everybody in so far. There are a couple of people that are in and out still. But we are ready, needless to say. So I'm excited about tonight's discussion. We want, like we said, we want to help you thrust into your purpose so that you can live the best version of yourself and win. We tapped into some winner's resources with a winner's mindset, and we want to see you win <laughs> as well. And tonight, our topic is so interesting because... I, when I was talking, I was um, uh, looking at this earlier, and we had it kind of worded differently. And when I started look, I looked at it I'm like, you know what? I want to do this. I want to do this another way. Let me let me let me do this another way. Let me figure something out here. So I I, I kind of reworded it from what we had. And um, of course, you all know because I send the topic out. Our topic tonight is I'm possible, and we're doing a play on the word impossible because oftentimes we look at our situation as just that as though it can't possibly happen so our topic i'm possible that we're dealing with tonight now we know that the bible says that um all things with god all things are possible we know that you know it's it's not you know hey we can over we can we can be super deep all we want to but we know what the Bible says. But sometimes it's very hard for us to face that in, a pra in our practical situation, in practical life, in our everyday lives and what we're doing and how we're experiencing things. It's hard for us to see it that way. It's hard for us to face it. God is so awesome, though, that he gave us wisdom. He gave us a mind to figure things out and to sort them out. And a lot of times we just don't use you know, the capacity of our mind, of our ability. We don't use it. We tap out. We give up. You know? So yes. most often, too, we'll, we'll over-spiritualize things. We'll over-spiritualize our situation. And then we'll get mad when things don't pan out the way we thought they should. <laughs> How often has that happened to you? I can raise my hand. Many. Raise my hand. Get so mad. I'd be like, oh, goodness. It's not what I thought. Why this happened to me? How come I can't get this to go right? How come I can't get that to go right? What's going on? I need life to work out the way it's supposed to. This ain't the way God showed me. Oh, I thought God had my back. Oh, he forgot about me. Wah, 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 wah. wah. I'm never going to whine. But I want you to understand something. I want you to think about this thing, even from a practical um, situation for just about a minute. Think about it. While it is impossible for some, it's possible, very possible for others. We have to think about it practically that in every impossibility, there is possibility. Impossible cases are not forever. Impossible in one situation, possible in another. Everything is possible. It's just that the impossible things take a little longer to figure out. I hope you're following me. I'm not saying that it's not possible through God. I'm saying from your practical position, you'll look at it and say, wow, this is never going to happen. It's impossible. You've said it. Don't get too deep on me. You've said <laughs> it. We've all said it. So <laughs> the impossible things take a little longer to figure out. And some people will just settle into mediocrity. Because we can't get past ourselves. But when we can get past ourselves, when we can get to the point of actually seeing some of our goals achieved, then we realize, wow, this really was possible. This really was what God showed me. 
He really did tell me, oh, it really is if God said it, that settles it. <laughs> how, come that, how come that see me catch people by surprise at that? I don't know, God, but we're so happy and shocked. Like, God, you don't. I just can't believe it. I just can't, can you believe it? I just can't believe it. Yeah, I can believe it. I can believe it. Can you believe it? Did you believe it? Some of us just didn't believe it. I didn't believe it. Huh? So at that, yeah, at, at that time, and then we at all the, shot like, me. Right. At, the, at the time, at, at, sorry, I think I muted myself. Did I mute myself? No, I didn't. At the time, <laughs> it seems like it's just like, just so unachievable. And I didn't believe, I believe that it could happen, but I didn't believe it was going to happen. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, so believed that, it, I believed it could, but for some reason, things just never seemed to pan out. And what seemed so impossible became possible all of a sudden. Oh, well, why? He did it. God did it. Didn't he do it? Won't he do it? And then that's when we get real deep. And then we want to <laughs> claim God then because it happened. <laughs> he did it. He did it. So I want you guys to understand something that anything that you have in your dreams, in your mind, in your purpose that God has shown you, when God, when, it's, when there's been a word of prophecy, a word spoken over your life, something that, you know, and even if it's been years, I want you to un understand something. Anything you put your mind to is achievable. You have to make sure that it lines up with the will of God for your life. Now that's the stickler right there. A lot of times it may not be God's will, but when you know, you just know. And when it lines up, it's achievable. So that's what I'm going to use as my word tonight, my verb. I'm going to have to come up with a name for my verbs in it. Uh, for my verbs, I want, to come, I want to deal with the word achieve. So this portologist, find me, some, find me a little saying for that spot right there. So my word for tonight is achieve. And when we look at the verb intransitively, it means to attain a desired end. Transitively, it means to carry out successfully, to accomplish, to reach. Your goals are accomplishable. Your dream is reachable. You can achieve everything that you envision. But you have to believe that what may look like it says impossible, I want you to just shove that M over a little bit to the left and just stick your finger down in the middle of between that I and that M and know that it, when it looks impossible, you can pat yourself on the chest and say, I'm possible. Yes. Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I want you to type that in tonight. That's our first participation clause for tonight. I want you to type in the words, I'm possible. Because indeed you are. Everything that you put your mind to, Everything that God says you can have, be, do, or attain, I want you to pat yourself on the chest after you type this in. Type in, I'm possible. Then pat yourself on the chest and say, I'm possible. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I am. I am. I'm possible. <laughs> and in understanding and knowing that you are possible, I need you to accept the challenge. Because that's exactly what lies ahead of you. It seems a little, you know, testy. It seems a little dreary. But guess what? Every challenge comes with just that. Tests and trials. And you have to go through them. You, have, you just have to go through the process. But when you know that you're possible, you can say, oh, I'm possible. Oh, this is not impossible because you know what? I'm possible. Because when the devil, the devil would have had his way, I still wouldn't be here. I would, be, I would have lost my mind, but I'm possible. My mom was told that I was, you know, dying inside, that she had cancer, that she had to have an abortion to save her life, to get treatments, but I was possible. I'm possible, y'all. I'm possible. You're possible. You're not a mistake. You're possible. So accept the challenge that comes along with all of those things that seem impossible. Accept the challenge. I want you to type that in. We're going to be busy tonight. I accept. I accept because I need you to understand that when God puts it before you, it doesn't come without snags and stumbling blocks, but it's challenges and you can get past them. Why? Because I'm going to tell you something that's awesome in that one clause right there. Challenges 
are golden opportunities for success. Challenges are golden opportunities for success. How do you think so, Ms. Anita? Well, I'm glad you asked that question because how can there be a miracle if there wasn't an obstacle? Come on now. Hmm? How will you chase the storm if it's not a storm? Hmm? You just need the challenge to be revealed. How can you um, achieve your dreams or reach your dreams or live your dreams if you don't dream? Hmm? They're golden opportunities. We all have the opportunity to do great things, but what we do with the time and the mindset is another. And we have to understand where we are and accept the challenge because the oh. thing is, in order to be successful, you have to understand that you have to do something. Something has to happen. Success, oh. doesn't, success um, comes out of things that, that we go through, that we experience, that the problems that we face even the people who refuse to give us what we deserve. All of those things breed success. Yes, yes. They breed success. So we have to understand and accept the challenge and know that within every challenge that we face, there are opportunities. The Bible used to say that, um, the, 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 uh, that uh, he will make the enemy our footstool. We have to learn how to shake those things off of our back and step on them just to go a little bit higher and not allow them to land on us and press us down. No, you, yes. got, to, you got to push that stuff off of your shoulders because that's the stuff that you stand on. You don't hold your head down in shame about any challenge or anything that you've gone through. Even when you've made your own mistakes, you brush that off and you stand on that as well. Yes, yes. And don't be afraid of facing the things that you've never seen before. Because those are a whole nother set of challenges that come with the acceptance. You have to learn that something new can be something great. Just because you never did it like that before, don't, beneath, don't mean it can't be done now. Don't get so caught up in traditionalism and yesterday and what you used to do and how they used to do it and how it was back then that you can't accept something new. You have to learn to accept new challenges. Because it can be the thing that's going to take your dream or your vision or your business or your movement, your organization to the next level, your marriage, your relationship, your children's education, everything to the next level. So don't be afraid to accept something new. I just had that experience today with one of my business partners. I found something online that we could do now that we've never been able to do before with music. And I was like, wow. This is incredible. And I actually tried it out real quick just to do the sample, just to see. And then I sent it to my, my partner. And she was like, I like to deal with people I know and I can put my finger on and I can see. I'm like, I get that. But I need you to check this out. And she fought me all day because I actually found it this morning. She fought me all day on it. And then she finally went and looked at it. And she actually went into the situation and was like, and I told her, I said, just try it. Trust me. If you just try it, you'll see. It is so unlike anything that we've ever done before. So she went on and she tried it. And now she hit me back and it's like, oh my goodness. I'm like, see? And see, that's the thing that sometimes something new will come upon us and we won't, we'll be so afraid to step out. I'm not afraid of change. I'm not afraid of, of accepting the challenge of something new and something different. Of course, I'm going to investigate it. Of course, I'm going to vet it. I'm going to see if it's actually possible for me or usable for me or feasible for me. And if it's something that is not going to, I mean, what do you have to lose? Come on, good people. Time. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But at least try it. Don't be afraid because something new can be something great. The other thing I want you to understand that when you accept the challenges, not only are you seeing that those are golden opportunities that are, that can, uh, that are opportunities for success and that, that it could be something new that's coming your way, but sometimes everything in the kitchen sink comes throwing at you. Oh my goodness. Here come this one and that one. Money problems, husband problems, churn problems. Yeah, I said churn. <laughs> oh, and then people with their non, uh, their own, um, as my cousin, Betty Wright has a song called Unsolicited Advice. 
people with the unsolicited advice come and trying to repaint the vision that you envision. So here we go. I have all of this stuff thrown at us and then obstacles that seem like, it seemed like when I get just that bit closer and I get this, this, this far back, I come two steps forward and something not, something knocked me a step back. I get this far forward and something else does knock me a step back. But you know what? Guess what? There are a whole lot of things that are going to come flying at you. You think the devil is just going to let you do this? No. He is pacing to and fro as a roaring lion, as a roaring lion, just sitting patiently, just waiting to see whom he may devour. But see, when he comes, you have to learn how to deal with it because he's going to keep trying. It's in his nature. He's going to keep trying. He's persistent. He's patient and all of that good stuff. But you already have the power. You just got to understand he's coming. And when he come, you know, then he's going to come in the midst of all the good stuff. So what you have to do is you have to realize that, that stuff is going to come from all sides. You have to choose the best fit. When you get a whole lot of stuff that's thrown at you, just start sorting through. Just start sorting through. Okay, this is good. Okay, double, you can have that. Okay, this is good. Okay, double, take your foolishness on over that way. Okay, this, okay, you can take your gossip and your unsolicited advice. Okay, oh, ooh, this is, oh, this will work. Oh, you can take this because this is of the devil. And start sorting through those things and choose the best fit. Don't be afraid of it. Don't start ducking. Hey, hold up your shield. Boom, boom, boom. Where are your weapons? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. Use your weapons. So you can stand in, you can start sorting. Don't be afraid of it. Accept the challenge. Just choose the best fit. Just choose the best fit. Because in all of this, what we're doing, as we accept, is that we're taking chances. Uh -uh. we're taking chances everything that you do in life is going to come with some level of risk whether you invest whether you open a business whether you enter into a relationship or a marriage it doesn't guarantee that everything is going to be great hmm. look at the divorce rate doesn't mean that it's going to be a bed of roses doesn't mean that just because it's the perfect person that every day is going to be peaches and cream no it takes work it takes chances how many chances has god given us Mm, come on. Oh, Lord. Lord, I'm so sorry I did this, Jesus. Oh, they done caught me for lying on my taxes. Lord, if you just get me out of this, I promise. How yeah. many times? I don't know why I chose that one. But how many times? It is what it is. How many times has God given us chance after chance after chance after chance? Oh, I'm not going to do this no more. Oh, I'm not going to. Oh, Lord, why did I talk about her? And now my child doing the same thing. Okay? So, how mm -hmm. many times? Are you going to ask for the chance? And guess what? He's a God of a chance after a chance after a chance after a chance. Yes. So don't be afraid to take chances on those challenges because it could be tests. God could be testing you and setting you up for something great, but you're so busy trying to hide from it and ducking and dodging that you don't want to take the chance. You already know I'm possible. I'm possible. So oh. therefore, whatever I'm facing, all I have to do is take the meat and throw away the bone because I already know that I'm possible. <laughs> that sounds good to y'all. It sounds good to me. Mm, mm -mm. What you think, Annette? Are you possible? It sounds wonderful. Except, <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, you know, we talk about I'm possible. So self-love is not selfish. We have to learn to love ourselves because we, we're saying I'm possible. So we have to really say, you know, you'd be surprised at the people who really don't like themselves. Come on. They, don't, they look in the mirror and I, I'm saying that because I, 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 I was that way. And so we have to have self-love. But we know that one of the first things I really want to talk about here is say, be anything but predictable. Mm. Be anything but predictable. We have to learn how to look at uh, the world, uh, look at your vision, uh, uh, look at your dream through the, uh, a child's eye. See, because ch children have endless curiosity. Yes, you know, they, they have do. insight. They go, they, they ask questions that sometimes when I be, uh, my grandbaby talking, I be looking at her like, wow, you know, they're not afraid, they're fearless. Mm. You know, they'll get on top of a house and jump. <laughs> you know, that's, that's <laughs> my life, you know. But then that's how we have to learn how to be anything but predictable. We have to add a twist to your normal day activity. Do something different. Take a detour. You know, take a walk. Listen to opera. You know, I don't know what they're saying, but every now and then I'll listen to Even sometimes I stop on the Spanish channel. I don't know what those people are talking about, but I listen, you know. Mm -hmm. You have to explore a new direction. You know, go to a different restaurant. You know, go down a different street. 
one of the things I like to do, and I know it's crazy, I, I love to go down little streets like, mm, where'd that go? <laughs> I do it all the time, you know, but, you know, but I'm, I'm trying to be anything but predictable. And, mm-hmm. and even in, ch- in our, in our uh, churches, you know, pretty much I can uh, predict what's going to happen. Okay, they're going to sing this song, and then they're going to do this, and then they're going to do that. I, I saw about a few months ago about this young man, was uh, the preacher was preaching, and this little fella knew everything he was going to say. Hmm. I, it was just, it was mind boggling. It's like growing up, you know, when the preachers get down, because I grew up Baptist, you know, you know the preacher, they're going to be on the cooling board. You could just almost uh, repeat it verbatim. So, so if you're going to have self-love, be anything but predictable because it, it will help you along the way. You know, you won't be so staunch and sit in your ways. And, and that's why we have to have self-love because we, we don't want to go outside our, our um, little box. See, I, I like to color on the outside. Some like some people like to stay in the lines. Well, I like to color outside the lines. Mm. You know, Come on. some of the beautiful things I've ever created has been outside the lines. So learn how to be anything but predictable. Not only that, you have to understand that you are your choices. <laughs> so you have to live by, you have to live Say by that. that. that yes, you, are your choices. you are. We have to live by wow. choice not chances be motivated but not manipulated make a change but not an excuse be useful but not used and you know i choose my self-esteem choose self-esteem but not self-pity so the way you are is by, by your choices we do have choices we can do things that you know we'll sit around so well you know i'm not going to do this and you know we make up excuses but see you got to understand something i found this to, out today it's not the load that breaks you down. It's the way you carry it. So you may be carrying a load, but you got to choose how you carry that load because you yeah. can be down based on how you carry it. And life may, may not be a party that we hope for. See, because you know back in the day, we used to have a, heart, a house parties. So mm-hmm. life may, may not be a party we hope for, but while we're here, we should dance. Mm-hmm. So whatever's going on in your life, you got to understand it's your choice. You are your choice. So whatever choice you make, when you look in the mirror, you are that choice. Now, we can't help what people do to us, but we can show enough help what we do to ourselves. Come on, and that's man. the problem that, you know, we, 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 my choice, right now, I'm looking, when I look in the mirror, I see choices I made 10 years ago, or 15 years ago, you know. So I am my choice, but I choose now to do something different. I, I choose to, to, work i choose to try to build my ministry i choose i choose to to do the things that i need to do to get further because you can't really blame nobody five ten years from now even though there are people who stole those stumbling blocks in your life but but you are your choice it's up to you i choose to be different i choose to walk in authority i choose to hold up my head when i walk and not look down at the ground i choose to walk with my shoulders back and strut not because I got it going on like that, but but I make I made a choice to even walk different, to even think different, to even talk different. So you are your choice. So every time you look in that mirror, ladies and gentlemen, you are that choice that you made. Not only that, you have to uh, learn how to build with bricks thrown at you. You have to learn how to lay up your foundation with bricks that's been thrown at you in life things will not go the way you want them to. There will be times when there will be stumbling blocks and curves and people uh, won't help you, but you have to take those blocks mm-hmm. and you have to build on them. You have to build on that heartache. So, okay, yeah, you hurt me this time, but that won't happen again. You have to build on that dream. Okay, my business didn't get off the ground, but I'm going to take that failure and I'm going to build on that failure. So whatever's going on in your, in your life, you have to take that brick that foundation and begin to to build because people will throw things at you life is just not always the way we want them to be even now with the with the virus we're taking that we're home but we're taking now okay i'm home so i'm gonna start building i'm gonna start building okay i didn't have enough time before i was always working i was always going somewhere i always going to the store i'm out you know i'm i always got to be at the church i got you know i got i'm on the usher board Ursha, I said Ursha. I was saying, <laughs> so it was always something to take you away from your dreams, to take away from your vision. But now because of this virus, now we're home. Now what? 
So now we this thing has been thrown at us. So we're gonna take this and, and build on it. We gotta we gotta look forward to the new. We gotta count your blessings. We gotta adapt the change. So when stuff was thrown at you, those are the things that you need to understand. Because we have to make sure that we take this opportunity to really walk in in, in the greatness and our fullness. Because, because even now I have my mind even clear. Because I'm gonna tell you something. I'm a I love going to the store. I just go to the store just to go to the store. You know, and, and I was thinking about a lot of that's waste time. I, I'll just walk around the mall and touch stuff. You know, I probably touch everything and probably buy one item. But now that I'm home, I'm forced to be home, uh, you know, because it's life and death. So now I'm taking that opportunity mm -hmm. to build on, on this coronavirus. I'm building. I'm, I'm, I'm building on it. Yeah, it was thrown at us. And no, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't like it. We didn't look forward to it. But, but in everything, you know, we have to give God thanks. So I'm not thanking him necessarily for the virus, but I'm thanking that he put me in a position that I could be still long enough to hear him. I could be, be still long enough to build my dreams and I could be still long enough to work on things that I need to work on because mm -hmm. I'm always on the go and that's just the way it is. But not only that, we got to understand, understand that it's a G thing. It's, okay. uh, you know, we have to understand that if you're going to be, possible you gotta understand there's it's a, a a g thing first it's a god thing it's a god is a deity he's a supreme being he's a creator but not only that, you you got god but now you gotta have goals you gotta have an aim and a desire a result what what are you doing with this time but now that you got god and you got goals you understand that you're growing you increase in size and quality not you increase i increase not just in substance but i increase in my mindset I increase in the way I view things. I increase how I treat people. So it's growing. But not only that you, you have God goals and, and growing, but also now that I got all this stuff going on, I'm glowing. I, I'm light. I'm you, know, I'm light. You, know, you know how when a, a pregnant woman, when a woman is pregnant, and you be say, oh, you're glowing. You know how a woman have that, that glow about them. And that's how we are. It, it, they call it a metaphysical trait experienced by pregnant pregnant women how there's some for some pregnant women that their skin get beautiful and they just, something happens and so that's what happens in this g thing because you got god you got goals you're growing and now you're glowing and so in other words you're light and and we do know anita we need a light yes this god world so we are the light but without god without the goals without growing ain't no need to even start trying to glow because see you got to have god to get you there and you got to have goals to, to lead you there and you got to grow once you get there and then you learn how to glow once god had done what he needed to do with you so it's possible love yourself you are not selfish you just love yourself and these are the things that we have to really grow because let me say this before i move on before you'll ever be any good to somebody else you got to learn how to be good to yourself come on if I'm going to tell somebody how good God is, you know, and I'm telling this person all these wonderful things and I don't believe it, no, I want to make sure that I have self-love and then I can tell you, Anita, about love and I can tell some other people about love and how awesome God is. So love yourself because when you do, it's not being selfish. You're just trying to get somewhere. So that is love yourself. Walking tall um i love that movie i think it came out in 2004 with the rock oh mm -hmm. my god listen let me tell you something all rock was doing was walk around with a baseball bat i said okay <laughs> i love that movie you know because it, it talks about strength and it talks about how uh this one man came and and they were trying to destroy everything that he he had grew up to know and how he stood up. And every now and then you have to stand up for something or you fall for anything. And so that's why I love that movie. But my first point is you have to be stilettos in a room full of flats. Need to put that. You have to be stilettos in a room full of flats. If you know anything about stilettos, Stilettos causes you to rise. It, it, it gives you some height. Stilettos are really beautiful. It causes you to strut, you know, and you know, flats, you know, you may be the only one in a room 
with stilettos. In other words, you may be the only one in the room that have what it takes. You got your stride, you got your walk, but you got to be confident in who you are. You have to walk in those stilettos. You got to be confident in what God called you to do in your business, in your ministry, in your organization. You have to learn how to walk tall. And there may be a lot of people in that room that have on flats, and I'm not talking about you know, natural flats. I'm saying they don't have your vision and they don't have your dream and they don't have what you have. And so that's why you have to be so careful with your dreams and your vision. It's all right for somebody to give you a little idea, but don't allow people walk around in flats to tell us to let a sister what to do. Come because on. what stiletto does is when you put on heels, it gives you a different walk. It gives you a different strut. And for some of us, we just try and not fall, you know. <laughs> Me. We're not used to stilettos. So I just decided that I'm going to be, the, if I have to be the only stiletto in the room, that's okay. Because I'm going to walk in my, my vision. I'm going to walk in my dream. I'm going to walk tall because, you know, the other sisters may not see what I see. You know, that they may not feel what I feel. They may not even believe what I believe. But I'm walking tall and I'm believing that regardless of who else believes it, it don't matter. Regardless of who else uh uh, you know, pat me on the back. It don't matter. Regardless of who else, who else say, you know what, girl, I don't know. I don't think this is going to work. I have to be a stiletto. So I'm a stiletto wearing sister. And I'm going to walk my stilettos and I'm going to rock it because I believe that I've been called to do something. I believe that I've been anointed to touch uh, the lives of people. So I walk in my stilettos. Now, every now and then, I may have to put my flats on because my feet may hurt a little bit. But that's all right. I'm still going to walk, even through my hurts and through my pain, through my uh, heart. I'm going to walk and do the things that I've been called to do. Because why? I'm possible. But not only that, you have to make sure, put on the next one, Nita, because I got it. Look at stuff here. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, next you have to put on your pen and loaf, loafing, loafers in to get you where you need to, to be. When I put pen and loafer, in, I was like, you know how sometimes we'll loaf around and we don't do the things that we need to do. You know, we don't get to where we need to be because we, we, we don't, we're not motivated. We don't have what it takes. We don't have that drive. We don't have that, uh, that, uh, move, you know, we don't, we don't have that thing that burns on the inside that only, on, only you and God know about. And so sometimes we like a penny loafer. We just, we sit around and we chill. We're not working on our dreams or we're not working on our vision. And we just saying, I trust God. You know, God is going to get me there and I trust him. And like we often say how we used to pray and pray and pray. Well, that was wonderful, but we were penny loafering because we had got to the point that prayer was the fathers we really was going to get, you know, so mm -hmm. when you loaf around, you, you're just not, you, you, you're not going to get what you need to, to get. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was talking about earlier how we have to take this time to really uh, uh, move and, 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 and get going because we are called the movement. And so that means that we are constantly going somewhere. And Matthew 25 and 26, the Bible says, but his Lord answered and said it to him, you wicked and lazy servant, you know that I, that I reap where I have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seed. And what he was saying, listen here, you need to get on about your business because you're sitting around, you know, you're really not even entitled to what you got, but since you got it, you might as well work it. So that's what we're doing with the movement. We're, we're, we're not just penny loafering, but we had decided that we're trying to get somewhere. And in order to get somewhere, we got to keep it moving. We got to keep going. We got to keep persevering. Even sometimes, you know, you, you know, it, uh, it, it gets hard and we don't see our way and we don't make not, we don't have the money, but we keep moving. So like, okay, I can't do that, but let me move to this. Okay, I can't do this, but let me move to that. And so that's how you have to understand, ladies and gentlemen, you need to stop penny loafering. <laughs> and I love that. And then we had to put on our Sunday go to meeting uh, kicks. When I was in, when I was growing up, when I was growing up, you know, you had your church shoes, you had your 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 school yes. clothes. You, know, you come from school, you take off your clothes because mama don't take all them school clothes. And then so you change that. So even at church, there were certain shoes we we wore, and uh, they were called Sunday go to meeting uh, shoes. And I put kicks, you know. So. Uh, we're in a place right now that things have really shifted and changed. So even though we have our son to go to meeting uh, kicks, well, it's time now to change because 
those things that, that we used to do, those shoes that we used to wear was important because that's what we were called to do. But now because of the shift, now because of, uh, of the world actually have shift, we have to shift. So now you, we no longer wear our Sunday go to meet and shoot kicks. What we do, we're going to just, whatever God calls us to do, whatever shoes he tells us to wear, that's what we're going to wear. Whatever he's called us to do, that's what we're going to do. And so I can remember when I was growing up, those shoes, you couldn't get them dirty. You couldn't uh, scar them. And, and I don't know why, but mom used to love to get me and my sister white shoes when we were little. And we used to uh, get them scratches on it. And I would be, <laughs> Nita, I'd be so scared. I would I remember getting Comet cleaning because those were my Sunday go to meeting kicks. But now, listen, y'all, right now we're not going to the, to, our, to our, our churches. Now we're in our homes. You know, some people still trying to go. I don't understand that. But now, God said, now I've changed. Now, you, you're, where are you going to wear your Sunday go to meeting kicks at now? He said, because I've changed. The way you look at things is different. The way you uh, even process stuff is different. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn. I had to learn how to to walk tall in some areas because at my Sunday go to meeting, my life changed. And this is what happens: life changes. So what do you do when life changes? You got to keep walking tall, even though you know I can't wear my Sunday go to meeting uh, shoes no more because I'm not gonna put those shoes on to walk around my house because those shoes hurt my feet, you know. But now things have changed, so. My point is we have to get to a place that we learn how to change when God changes and move when God moves and go when God tells us to. Because those Sunday go to meeting kicks are no longer working. And finally, you have to put on your work shoes. John 9 and 4 said, I must work the works of him who sent me. Come on. All of this day, the night coming when no man can work. It's time for us to get down to working. Put on those work shoes. Get down in, in, in the place that you need to be. Pull out those books. Go and revisit your vision. Maybe tweak it. Visit that dream. Get to that place that you can get that things in order. Because we understand this. And me and Anita talking about, we know this, this uh, country will open again. Yes. And, and there's going to be a lot of businesses that's been lost. There's some, there's some businesses that will never recover. So we that have these visions and dreams, let's get these things in order. Let's get them in working order. So when this, when this United States of America open back up, we hit the ground uh, running. Because now what's going to happen, people who you never, who you never thought would be calling on you, going to need you. Because there are people who's lost everything and life will never get back to where it was so what we have to do is put on our working shoes and let's go i, I put on here put on your work shoes and let's go let's get it moving let's get to the next uh, uh place in your life work that vision we talk about it all the time the work which we're, we're trying to come up with something now and i'm gonna talk about it uh, with nita you know that she's in one place and i'm another but you know what it's amazing how god have allowed it to us to be in several different areas and still get a message across. Mm -hmm. So you got to put on those, on those work shoes and, and, and let, and get going. And so finally, you know, I, I want to tell you that you got to walk tall because people are going to need what you have. Well, you may think what you have is insignificant. Somebody going to need, need to know how you, how you got through. Somebody going to need to know how you got delivered. Somebody going to need to know how did you get started? You know, cause there are going to be so, so many people, you know, so, do know this, put on your stilettos in a room full of flags. Stop pinning loafing around. It gets you nowhere. You know, those Sunday to go to meeting shoes, those kicks, they don't serve a purpose anymore because you're home. And put on your work shoes and let's go. All righty. All righty. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Well, 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 well. Now, that you learn how to walk in your cell. I'm a, I'm a stiletto in a room full of flats. That's mine right there, boy. Who will say she got, she say she feel a t-shirt coming on. I told her I want one when she make it. <laughs> <laughs> so with all of that being said, this is how, what you can do, good people. You have to change your narrative. You have to change the narrative. Even, you know, what looks impossible, 
saying I'm possible, you have to change it and you yeah. have the power to do so. I don't care how many times you have fallen in the very situation you're in. I don't care how long it's been. And you've been hearing us say this a lot. And I can, it's amazing how sometimes I look at our topics and the conversations that we have. And it's like, there's so many different conversations you can have about the same thing because exactly. it's all about dreams and vision and moving forward and prospering and getting all out of your life that God put in you and living that abundant life that he says you have the ability to live, that he came, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And because I believe that I'm going to have exactly what God said, who God said, when God said, I know that when he, what he put in my dreams and vision is attainable because I'm possible. And knowing that I'm changing the narrative, I'm going to change the narrative just like these people did on that little logo, just like that scissor cutting the I am off of possible because everything that I see is possible. And I know that just because I had a failing moment doesn't mean it's the end. We've talk, we talked about this a few weeks ago, but I want to say to you my first point, failures build your story. It's wow. not defeat. It's just a pointer to do better than what you did. Because if you fail at something, you're going to pick up the pieces and you're going to do better. Yeah. You have to know that you're in a constant study of your life. Your life is in that constant place of learning and growing. You're, gonna, you're a student. You're studying. And what you face is your training ground. Yes. It's yes. training you for where you're going. So it's building your story. It's building who you are. It's, it's a part of it. When you stand up and have your testimony, these are the things that you are going to be talking about. I remember when I didn't have the money. I remember when, I was, when this was just a thought or a prayer. I remember when God first told me that this person was my husband. I remember when God, you know, it's, it's some of the things we can't even share with people. Some of the things that we can't even let people in on, we can't even begin to utter them from our lips, but we know in our spirit and we know what God has said. So when we fail at something, when it looks bleak and dim and like it's not going to happen, those are the things that build your story. So change the narrative and just continue to build the story and stop looking at it as final. Yeah, yes, yes. When Jesus, while well, at, at, at the pool of Bethsaida, when Jesus saw the man who had been uh, sick by the pool for 30 something years, he looked at him and asked him, do you want to be whole? Do you want to be well? Do you want to? So I'm asking you the question today. Do you want to live? Do you want to achieve your goal? Do you want to have what God said you're supposed to have? Do you want to live the way he said you were going to live? Is that really what you want? Do you believe that is for you? And I want y'all to answer me, answer me, type some answers in. Do you believe what he said? Do you believe the vision is gonna to come to pass? Do you want to be well? Do you want to be healed? Do you want to live prosperous? I don't see nobody answering. I don't see nobody typing nothing in. I need y'all to type it in. I need you to type it in. Oh, Danielle raised her hand. I see, I see them coming in now. I want to see y'all. I want to see you guys answer me. Tell me what you think. If you really believe it, if you really accept what God has said for your life, if you really believe and know, and he said, he asked the man, he said, do you want to be well? And you know what he said to him? He said, take up your bed and walk. So that's what I'm here to tell you right now. Stop laying in mediocrity. Stop laying in the pity. Stop laying in the sorrow and the defeat. Stop laying in the failures. Take up your bed and walk. He didn't tell him to throw it away. He didn't tell him to burn it. He just said, take it up. And when you take that thing up and put it under your arm and walk with it, somebody might ask you, so what is that you're holding? Well, let me tell you, I was one time, one time I was living in such defeat. One time I was so pitiful and so broken, busted and disgusted. I didn't know what to do. But guess what? I picked up this thing and I picked, I took the bull by the horns. I changed the narrative on my life and I got what belonged to me. And I want everybody here to get what's yours. Lori, I see your hand up. I don't know if you're raising it like Danielle, just to raise it to say hallelujah, or if you're raising it to speak. If you're raising it to speak, raise it again. But I want you all to take up your bed. I want you to take up what you have been laying in. Think about it. And only you know. You know that thing that has kept you on your knees. You know the thing that has kept you guessing and wondering and hoping and wishing and praying and believing and oh God, and put you in that pitiful state. I want you to take that. I want you to take it up because Jesus asked, do you want to be well? Do you want this? And if you really want it, it's yours. So you ain't going to get it laying by the pool. 
You're not gonna get it laying in your bed and having a pity party and sitting in the corner turning the light switch on and off like that lady in Fatal Attraction. You're not gonna <laughs> get it like that. <laughs> the only way you're gonna get it is you gotta take up your bed and walk. You gotta move from that place. Because there's a whole lot of stuff that you have to do, but you can't get it until you walk, right? And I hear you, Danielle, until you walk into your purpose. You gotta get up and that's right, well, you got to move. You can't stay in the same place. You can't. Because you got, you're building a story. And right now, whatever you're doing, the other thing that you're doing right there is that you are living history. Somebody's gonna read about you one day. Your children are going to brag about you one day. Your grandchildren are going to talk, well, my grandmama was this, and my grandparents did that. And they're going to tell your love story. They're going to tell the business about your, your, your business. They're going to tell the stories about your ministry and how you started this thing. And everything that's in me started with my grandparents and my great-great-grandmother and my great-great-grandfather did. He proposed like this. All of that stuff is history making. Yes, it is. History in the making. You are living it. You're living and breathing it. Change the narrative. Change the narrative. Don't say, don't sit there and talk about what you can't do. You have to say, I'm possible. And if you're possible, each and every one of you on here tonight, if you are possible, then anything you see, anything you want, anything you desire, you can. You can, period. Why? Because God says you can. All it's right. not unachievable. It's not impossible. You are very possible. It's achievable. You can get to the desired end if you stay focused. That's what the word achieve means, to attain a desired end. And transitively, it means to carry out successfully. You can be successful. Transitive verb, it means to accomplish. You can accomplish it. You're dreaming, oh, it's just in my dreams. But guess what? Transitively to achieve me, you can reach it. You can reach your dreams. You can live them. You can have it. You can be it. You can do it. You can. Let's type that. I want everybody to type in, I can. Type in, I can. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can. Yes, I can. Me. This little girl from Daytona, I can. I can. And then after you type in I can, I want you to type in I will. <laughs> because guess what? It's going to come to pass. It has to. God's word does not return void. If he says it, that settles it, and he means it. Boom. It is what it is. Am I right about it? You're right about it. Amen. I can and I will. That's just the way it is. And you have to get to the place that you really believe that and you know it. And you live it. And you experience it. How many of y'all believe that today? And as we say so often, we've gotten into the habit to say the doors of the church are open. <laughs> but that's the thing, people. It's a doable thing. It's achievable. It's attainable. I see you, Lori. I believe. And I believe for you. Yes. I believe with you. I believe when you can't because I got your back. <laughs> We're talking about won't you come? I believe because <laughs> I got your back. I got your back, Francesca. I believe for you. I believe with you. Amen. So with all that being said, you know, the, we actually, when I say the doors of the church are open, I mean the mics are open. You guys can unmute yourself and um, if you want to have a comment or a question or um, want to share a testimony or something just sparked in your spirit that says, you know what, this spoke to me tonight and I just cannot just keep my lips sealed. I got to say something tonight. I got to say something. So you feel free to unmute yourself. But this is a <laughs> History Ebony. Go ahead, baby girl. Ebony been doing it. Somebody else will be able to do. Go ahead, Ebony, you first. And uh, I think that's uh oh yeah. Go ahead, baby. Real quick, I just want to say that um this is definitely encouraging because um my my challenge was overcoming certain things 
And that's what I was kind of like putting the effort in. I, I, I'm like, I'm going to force myself. I got to get past these fears. And I put something up, and I'm like, everybody knows I'm a shy bug when it comes to me singing and this and that, but I'm going to go ahead and remember, remember who I am. Exactly. I'm a stiletto. And I'm going and I'm gonna put this effort in and I'm gonna show people my works, you know, in the in the process of everything going on, even though I can't record something right now. I'm gonna, you know, show the app, show the work, show what I'm doing. And this I just enjoyed it. This was a very encouraging. And um me and my mom were listening and my mom was in the background like, uh-huh, that's right. You said All right, <laughs> <laughs> All right now, mom. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm so proud of you, Ebony. Me and Nanette were just like on your, I sent it to Annette, I'm like, Annette, you gotta see this. Ebony is putting out music. It is incredible. I am super proud of you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. That's just the start. That's the start, you know. And um, the, failures, the failures make your story. And yeah. um, I was grateful because the way that, the way those songs came about, they weren't, um, they weren't even when they first started. They weren't even presentable to show anybody and anything. In some way, somehow, they got some type of mix or something where they were at least some type of presentable. In the midst of all of this, so I was grateful and I wasn't mad at it. I knew it was some mistakes and everything, but I just knew that something was still going to come from out of it, and, and it has been. And it's just pushing me to do more because now everybody's like. Everybody, I didn't, Ebony, I didn't know you sing. I didn't know you sing. I didn't know. I'm like, I don't tell nobody because <laughs> I'm so shy. Uh -huh. so, this gave me that good, great confidence, and I'm and I'm happy for this message tonight. Well, it's it's in your blood, honey. You can't help it. It's in your blood, and I'm proud. It sounds amazing. I'm looking forward to the rest. Super, super proud, and you have been faithful on here, and I know where we came from. Yes. We walked through this journey with you on the movement. Yes, yes. So y'all been I've been so grateful for y'all because y'all definitely helped me get y'all big y'all are a big part of me getting through to this to this point. And I'm so grateful because now it's just it's there's still more. There's still more and I'm just grateful for everything. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, y'all. I'm gonna post the link. I'm gonna send it out. I want everybody to support Ebony. I'm very proud of her and she sounds amazing. She did a great job and it's more to come. So and this was a big step for her. So hey. That's a that's a testimony in itself. Anybody else want to say anything? Anybody else? You can unmute yourself and you can talk at this time. But Annette, what do you think, girl? Huh? What do you think about tonight? Well, it was it was a bomb diggity. Um, you know, I think somebody had raised their hand. Maybe not. I, no, you know, I think a couple of people raised their hand during the. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I know it was Lori and Danielle, but I think they were just raising to say hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Yes. But, uh, but yeah, so listen, good people. We want everybody on here to be super duper encouraged. Yes. Especially during this season. It is, it's a tough season, but like Annette said, this is, the better, this is the best time. And I've been seeing that a lot. This is the best time to get in tune to your purpose and to really prepare for what's next. Yeah. Because God is taking us somewhere in the world as we knew it will never be the same again. Yeah. Oh my God. Our lives are forever changed by this. The attention of the entire globe has been gotten. And if nothing else that we have learned that, you know, a, the time is drawing near and we have to get right and we have to be an example. We have to win souls and we have to be about our purpose and about God's business. So I want everybody to be encouraged and listen, we are here every Wednesday. Like clockwork, same time, same place. Feel free to come back and join us again next Wednesday with a different topic. We're excited that you dropped by. You could have gone anywhere else, but you chose to come here. And that you want to say anything before we log off? Yes, I want to thank everybody because it's because of y'all that we are. You know, so we thank you so much that you came at Wednesday after Wednesday and shared with us. So thank you so much. All right. Well, Michelle, you want to say something? Yes, I just want to say hello. Your hair is beautiful. Thank you. Oh, How are you doing? It's good to see you. <laughs> and it's good to hear you all. Y'all, you all always have encouraging words. So I really enjoy it tonight. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Amen, Michelle. Michelle, we're not <laughs> originals. We haven't seen her in a while, but we're so glad to have you on tonight. So uh good people. Hey. We've come to an end of our discussion and we want to say good, good night to you all. Be blessed, stay safe, wash those hands, 
Um, continue to practice social distancing. Don't be like these crazy fools in Pensacola having a cookout. Stay <laughs> home. <laughs> Linda, feel better. I hope, you, I hope you're doing well. God bless, sweetheart. And uh, we'll see you all next week. Same time, same place, different topic. Mm -hmm. Love you all. Thank you so much. Thank you.